Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're in the shop. We are going to be building cornhole boards. This is a quick tutorial on how to do them. You don't necessarily have to do them like I do. This is the basics. <clears throat> I looked up the rules, the official cornhole board rules. This is what it says to do. So the first thing you're going to need, you're going to need your plywood. You can get these at Home Depot. Sell two foot by four foot sheets at Home Depot. This is a quarter inch thick. I build these all the time, so I have <coughs> these are from a uh, from a piece of plywood I had. Like I said, I cut them two foot by four foot, <coughs> and I just set them to the side because I knew I'd need them again. The next thing you're going to need, you're going to need two two by four by twelves these are 12 foot long and that is just enough wood you'll have just a tiny bit of scraps left over after you're done but that will be the frame for your two boards after that you need an eight foot two by four the eight foot two by four is to cut your legs you're gonna have to have four legs and they're almost a foot long a piece so when you're done with the project you'll end up with a piece about like that. It's, I don't know, about four foot long-ish. You are gonna need four five sixteenths bolts, eight five sixteenths nuts, eight, you can use quarter or five sixteenths washers, whatever you wanna do. But you need four bolts and the appropriate hardware. two of everything on each bolt. That is for the legs. I'll show that to y'all in a little bit. Or if you don't want to do it where they're retractable, you just want them in a fixed position, you don't have to use that. You can just screw them down. And uh, I'll show you that. Uh, that. I'll show you guys that option here in a minute. Hardware. I use focus. I use a number nine. It's a number nine by two inch. And I use, ooh, focus, I use the hex bits. You can use Phillips heads if you want. I fucking hate Phillips heads. They strip out way too easy. These come in a box. They are GRK fasteners. They come in a box. It comes with a nice little drill bit that'll fit right into whatever you've got. The next thing I buy is these little bitty pinhead screws. These are one and a half inch by number six, I wanna say. They also, I don't think I have the box for them anymore. These definitely aren't it. Anyways, they come in a box. Oh, here's the box right here. There's a box, no. They come in a box that looks like this. These are a different set of screws I have for a different project. Side note, don't ever buy these because they suck shit. But they will come in a box with the appropriate bit in them too. That's why I like using Spax and GRK screws. The next thing you're going to need, you're kind of limited to whatever you have. I'm fortunate enough I can have all the, the right tools to do this. I have a miter saw that I make my cuts with. I also, <clears throat> if you don't have a miter saw, a skill saw will work just fine for you. To do my holes, I have a six inch hole saw bit. You can order that off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. I'll try and link it below for you. Uh, I think it was like 18, 20, 25 bucks, relatively cheap. If you don't have a hole saw, you're gonna want I don't even know what this is. You're going to want one of these. The, the name slips in my mind. I, I can't think of it. That is to cut out your circle. Not Like I said, not everybody's got the tools I do. Next, just a basic screwdriver. It doesn't have to be a good one. This is a Bauer. It is a home. Uh, it's a home brand. Uh, it's not industrial. Kind of around the house brand from Harbor Freight. 
I've had it about three years. Uh, I love it. I haven't had any problems with it. I got, I think it came with one battery and one charger. And I think I bought a separate battery, I want to say. I don't think it came with two. I think it's just one in the charger. Anyways, great uh, deal. You're also going to want to have a sander. I have a palm sander. Uh, the circle sandals will work fine. If you don't have a sander, get you, after everything's cut, get you a two by four, wrap your sander around it, and just go at it by hand. <coughs> now, depending on what design you want, today we're just gonna be doing a straight American flag with the burn background. Not a lot to it. I have a variety of spray paint. If you wanna use spray paint, on a special pattern like i said i'll show you how to tape it off and do the flag pattern really the only thing that i can't do myself i have my wife use her cricket and she cuts out the stars for me <clears throat> now you can find somebody to do that for you or you can just kind of mark the stars out yourself i personally i'm not going to do that i'm not good at you know that kind of stuff <clears throat> If you don't want to use spray paint, say you want it stained, whatever, I would suggest the Minwax brand. I love Minwax. Uh, like I said, I do a lot of professional woodwork, and that's all I've ever used. Uh, they're very good. It's a good price, long-lasting, doesn't wear. It's good. This is the polyurethane that we put on top of it after everything's said and done with. I will tell you, it is not 10,000% waterproof. It is relatively waterproof <coughs> in the sense that if you use it, and put it up, lean it against the door in your garage, put it in your shop, it'll be fine. Now, if you fold your legs up, lean it against the house and leave it in the, the rain and the sun, nothing is gonna last like that. But for what I do, that polyurethane is just fine. Uh, like I said, it's pretty water. It's pretty water resistant. So if you're out drinking with your buddies and you spill something on it, or you leave it out overnight <clears throat> and dew gets on it from the morning, that's more than fine. You're you're gonna be able to wipe it off and move on. It's not gonna soak in. It's just it's gonna keep your colors crisp. So let me get everything set up, and I will get back with you guys here in just a minute. I've got to move some stuff around. I'll show you all the measurements you need to have. Um, I gotta go get that star pattern for my daughter. She just tried to walk out of here and I shoot her away. So I will get back with you guys in just two seconds. I promise I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I got everything arranged. Uh, it did come to me, the hand saw that I couldn't think of all ago, it's called a jigsaw. So that'll work if you guys want to cut out the hole. I'll also show you how to cut out that hole. I'm not gonna do it, it's a pain in the ass, it takes forever. That's why I bought the hole saw. First things first, your boards are four foot long and two foot wide. So, you're gonna take your two by two by 12s. You're gonna mark them 48 inches and you're gonna cut them. You're gonna mark the first section, that's gonna be for one board. Your second two boards are gonna be for your second board. And the cutoffs for your third board, you will use. That's going to be the top or the the top and the bottom piece. All right, now that you have your first two sections cut <clears throat> in four foot length, your third section, of course, will be a little bit over four foot. I do not use these. Between the side boards for the top and the bottom, you can measure that, but I always wait, just stick it up there and mark it. So I'm gonna set these to the side. I don't need them right now. After this, I'm gonna cut the legs and then we were ready we will be ready to mark and drill the holes and start assembling 
So, all right, so I took that two by four by eight. I took the old one I had. Uh, if you buy a two by four by eight, you're gonna have enough left for two set. You're gonna have enough wood for two sets of legs. Do what you want with it. Uh, you might be able to find a two by four by six. If you find a six, you'll be fine. These boards for the legs, you're gonna cut those at Three, at 11 and three quarters inches long and when we get over there I'll show you how to mark those where they fold up or like I said you can screw them down where they're permanent it's your choice whatever you want to do I'm gonna get my hole saw I'm gonna get my drill my tape measures we'll be back all right so when you get your plywood you're gonna get home and get it cut but before you even leave you need to find the right piece of plywood it doesn't really show up on film, but you can see that this is pitted. This isn't a great piece of plywood. <clears throat> you can either A, stand there and dick with it all day and try to find a good one. B, you can sand this down where it's smooth. I, I don't have that much time. Or you can pick one with one side better than the other. This side's pretty good. It's got some little ugly spots here and there. It's not terrible. <clears throat> From there, you're gonna pick which end is better for the hole. This is the hole end that I'm gonna pick. There's no knots right here in the middle where I'm gonna be cutting. Your hole is going to be 12 inches from the side, so that's dead center. And you're gonna drop down nine inches. Now what that mark is, <coughs> it's going to be the center of your hole. If you have a hole saw, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're just gonna stick it right on the X and you're gonna drill it out. If you don't have a hole saw, <coughs> I would suggest finding something with a six, roughly a six inch circumference. It could be a little bit bigger. It could be a little bit smaller. Um, Tupperware bowls are good. You might have a plate in the kitchen that'll work for you. Kind of whatever you can find or you can take a screw you can set a screw in here you can take a piece of string tie it to the screw and to the pencil make a circle draw your six inches which it won't be a full six it'll be a three inches you'll have to put it at three inches to get it to be six inches overall you can do the same thing with the tape measure Put your screw on there, hold your pencil at six. Hold your pencil at six and just turn your tape measure. It'll, need, it'll leave you a nice little ring. Now how you're gonna cut that out with that jigsaw I showed you, you're gonna make, I make four holes when I have to do it. You know, one on each side, right across from each other. That way it, the hole doesn't have to be huge. It's just big enough for your blade to fit into. Just a little bit inside the line. <clears throat> that way you can get in, start cutting, and move over to where it needed to be. We're gonna get these, yeah, I'm gonna get that one marked. I'm gonna get them drilled out, and then we're gonna start assembling the frame. Now that your holes are drilled, clean everything up, you know, get it out of the way. You can toss, you can throw those little pieces away. Uh, I keep them. I'm going to try and build a connect four board here before too long. And rather than have a bunch of extra pieces that I got to cut out, I'll just keep those from projects.
if you're building this, I'm assuming you're going to have sandpaper. I hope you have sandpaper. Take your sandpaper, jam it in there, and just clean up the edges just a little bit. Ain't going to be perfect, but when you go to paint and you go to sand or stain, it's going to come in and it's going to be worth the time that you spent. It don't take but just a few seconds. I'm going to suggest doing the same thing to your boards. Like I said, all together, one at a time, doesn't matter. Set this guy to the side. All right, so this is my top piece. So we're going to leave it up. Let me adjust you guys. Hmm, a little crooked. You guys can find a partner find somebody to help you i don't have anybody out here i use two clamps to get started on all this crap i'm sorry if you guys are crooked i don't know what's going on with my camera so you're gonna take your two two by fours clean them up Woo! you are not gonna throw the boards don't throw it Clean it up, you're gonna get it set up here and then that's where the clamps come in. Clamp it up here, it doesn't have to be firm, it doesn't have to be straight, you can adjust it. Not real hard, hard enough. Before you start screwing, you're gonna take it and square it up on one end. So if it's longer or shorter, you're not gonna be working on two ends, you'll be working on the same end. You want it you want it flush on the sides, flush on the end. Your pinhole screws are what you're going to use for this. You guys can come through here and you can put them however many you want. I use a speed square and make rough points where they need to be. Like I said, it does not have to be perfect. You can't have too many, but you can't have too few. The more holes you make, the more putty you're gonna have to put on them to clean them up. Damn it to hell. So you're gonna run your screws in here, your board. I said leave your clamps loose so you can adjust it as you go down just a matter of moving the board back and forth where it's flush. Ideally, when you go to the hardware store, ideally when you go to the hardware store, you're gonna wanna get a straight, flat board. In reality, that's never gonna happen. So don't get one that's got a super bad curve to it. Get one that's got just a little bit of a curve and you'll be okay. It is, you can see right here, it's adjustable by hand. I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to get the other side on. I'll be back here in a minute. All right, now that you've got your side boards on and secured, we're gonna move on to the next one. You're gonna do these end boards. 
Where's my pencil? Alright, so then pieces of wood I said were cut off earlier. I didn't cut them. So what you're going to do, you can measure them and cut them if you want. This is an easier, much simpler way. Hold them up here. Make your mark on the inside. Chop it. After that, she'll pop right in. You can take one of your clamps and you're going to want to clamp it to the bottom. Make sure it's flush, level, and it's holding where it needs to be. So you take your two inch screws, you put one, or you put two in each side, one top, one bottom, and she won't go anywhere. Don't worry about putting your little small screws in through the top yet. When you flip it over right before you put all your gap filler in there, you can do that. But as of this very second, don't worry about it. You'll get there. Now that you've got your board flipped back over, we'll go ahead and punch your holes from the top. Uh, you can do three or four screws right here. Don't get carried away. Next thing I do before I flip it over and start dicking with the legs is I will put my um, wood filler in. This is DAP Dry Dex Dry Time Indicator. And it really doesn't matter what you do or uh, what, it really doesn't matter what brand you use. This isn't the best brand out there. It just happened to be what they had uh, during that shortage, you know, a few months ago. This one tub, whether I build dog kennels or cornhole boards or whatever I'm building, it will last me a long time. So if you're not going to be doing very much woodwork, I would suggest buying just a little bit of it. What you want to do, just put it up here, you know, get a good chunk on your finger, mash it down in there, rub it around with your finger a little bit, boom, you're done. Don't worry about trying to get it perfectly level. If you want to leave it sticking up just a skosh, that is fine. You'll be able to knock that off when you come back with a sander here after a while. But you definitely want to get this in and start letting it set up. You know, just like that, wipe off the excess, the big chunks. You want to get this in and let it, let it be setting up where you don't have to wait on it after you get done with your legs when you come back from sanding or when you come back for sanding. So just put it in there, put your chunks on it, and you'll be all right. We're done with the holes. I'm gonna let it set up and dry. Something uh, I didn't tell you guys earlier 
if you have this knot or a small imperfection that you don't like, like this was a, uh, a knot that had fallen out and it kind of looked like crap and it would have hung up on a bean bag. This was an exposed knot. This was an exposed knot. You can go ahead and throw a little putty in it. It's not going to hurt anything if you do it. Like I said, you're going to come back and sand all this flat. So it's not going to hurt anything at all. After, if you're worried about it falling out, moving or whatever, most wood that won't do that until you get into the really cheap crap. And at that point, it's going to have polyurethane coat over it anyways. So you don't have to worry about that. Let me get set up for the legs and I'll be right back. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your, take two of your four boards, 11 and three quarter inches long, and you're going to want to shape them on the top of them so when you have them up in the corner for the legs, you'll be able to rotate them without them catching. Now if you're just going to hard screw them to the board, you don't need to worry about this. The best thing I've found to get the correct radius is a, just a regular deal of salt, just plain salt. You stick it up there. You'll get her about level. And you make your mark all the way around. You'll come up something roughly like that. Every one of them is going to be just a hair different, but that is a pretty good place to start. Now, ideally you'll do them all four at once, but I'm going to build the other one off screen. You're going to want to cut these with a jigsaw or you're going to want to use this miter saw right here. I have done enough of them. I know how to use it. I know how to do it with a miter saw. If you don't know how to do it with a miter saw, you're going to learn right here in just a second. You're going to want to take it, cut your big chunk off, and then from there you're just going to make small cuts and it'll start rounding up. As you can see, it's not perfectly round, but it is round enough for what we are going to do. When you're doing this, be very aware of your fingers or you'll cut one of them off. You got to watch where you put your hands. Doing that, I would suggest ear pro. Uh, I really don't want to lose my hearing right now, but you do as you please. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab what is this? This is a 2364 bit, what is that? 3 8 ish? I don't know, whatever it is. And then this is a real simple process. All you're doing is drilling a hole. You're going to take it, you're going to find about the middle of your boards. It doesn't have to be perfect, never will. Once again, you're going to stack them on top of each other so your holes are going to be identical from side to side and you don't have one leaning somewhere. Our next item on the agenda is you have to figure out exactly where your feet are going to go so you can drill this hole. Now, like I said earlier, if you're gonna hard mount them, don't worry about it. If you're gonna hard mount them, stick them up in the corner like that, run you some two inch screws, walk away from it. For our case, we want them to swivel. We want them to be able to get out of the way. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna come two inches back and you're going to come an inch and three quarters down from the top now you're going to have to go back and remark it a couple times I always do when I've done a thousand of these things that is going to be where you need to drill your hole so you can put your legs on
Now it's got your hole drilled. You're going to take one of your 5 16 bolts and pull your nuts off, pull your washers off. I'm sorry, leave one washer on. I'm gonna put that on there like so. Put your washer. And you're gonna wanna put both nuts on there. Oh, shit. And you're gonna, when you get them set to the pressure you want them, you're gonna want to hold this nut with a wrench, hold your bottom nut with a wrench, take your top nut with another wrench and squeeze them together where it tightens them i'm not going to tighten that right now i don't know where my wrenches are but that's basic that's basically it you got it where it'll pivot when you're it, when you're done with it it'll sit flat up against it now if you do this and say you're pivoting and you're pivoting say this hits right here it's not a big deal take it back off take it back to your saw and just trim just a little bit over or trim a little bit off if you want to you can take the if it's hitting here take it off flip this whole board and see if it still hits if it hits not a big deal take it off readjust it move on Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for tonight. It's 10:30. I still got to be up at 5 a.m. So today, we got your boards cut. We got you your list of what, what supplies you're going to need. We got your boards cut. We got the frame built. We got your legs cut. We got them bolted on. Don't forget, put this uh, wood filler in so it can be drying. Tomorrow, when we come back, we are going to be sanding down the edges of this you can see there's a little lip we're going to take care of all of that we're going to tomorrow we're going to be sanding down these edges we're going to take care of that we're going to get everything sanded down and i am going to start painting it here's our field of stars that my lovely wife cut out for me thought i was going to get further tonight but i didn't so i will see you guys out here tomorrow when i get off work we're gonna get this one taken care of. And I'm hoping that the lights for this will be in. If they're in, I'll show you how to install those too. I hope you guys have a good evening. Comment down below if there's something you want me to build. Subscribe so you can see the next half of this. I'll catch you guys on the flip side.